So Guillaume has just been appointed as the head of digital industrial at Polestar. Polestar is a Swedish electric performance car brand headquartered in Gothenburg, Sweden. Hi Guillaume. Hi Tiffany. What's your career story? Share with us. Yeah, um, I always started like 20 years ago, a bit more than that, uh, in Germany. I worked for Michelin, the French tire company manufacturer. And um, it started to uh, work on the evolution of their uh, network infrastructure to move from legacy to uh, to uh, modern IP uh, uh, networking. There, after that, I moved back to France, uh, worked for the Adeco Group uh, for a couple of years in role like project management and business transformation. And uh, spent two years in Stockholm to uh, transform the business applications in the Nordics. And that was my first uh, touch with the Scandinavian and Sweden. Moving that back to France, uh, I worked after that for the Volvo Group. Uh, I joined Volvo IT, the group IT functions for the group Volvo. And there I spent like 10 years uh, developing my uh, career and leadership skills, moving from uh, project management, service portfolio management, and senior manager in different uh, areas overall in, in the IT organizations. 2016 for me was a turning point. Uh, uh, Volvo IT outsources IT uh, organization to uh, HCL, uh, an Indian uh, uh, outsourcing company. So I joined HCL and uh, I onboarded the journey to uh, be more on the service provider uh, side of IT. I moved to Gothenburg at that time and I became director for the uh, infrastructure services uh, and data center services in, uh, in Sweden for the Volvo Group and for other customers in the Nordics. For Following uh, a few years later, I've joined uh, uh, Capgemini uh, to uh, lead the delivery for the Volvo cars uh, uh, contract. I spent also uh, a few years at, at Capgemini. And to, uh, to come back to the industry, uh, this is my strong driver in, in, my, in my career to uh, work in the, in the manufacturing, in the automotive industry. I was really lacking that after a few years in, in IT outsourcing organization. And I joined SKF, the uh, global leader in Hall Bearing, headquartered in Gothenburg, uh, in a role uh, uh, still in, in connected to IT, but more in the purchasing. So I was uh, leading the sourcing initiatives for engineering and manufacturing globally. And uh, yeah, in two months from now, I will join Paul Star. Congratulations. It's such a great story you have in your career, in very international, a lot of changes. Now, I want to ask you, how do you feel now that you have achieved a milestone in your career advancement? I feel great to start <laughs> with. I feel proud about also and grateful about all the experiences I have had, the exposure I have had, the different roles in different cultures, as you said, uh, being international in, in my career, but also um, a thought for the different managers and mentors I have had during that time that have inspired me, that have guided me uh, uh, through uh, this journey. So um, I think we met earlier this year in springtime. What was it like at that time on our first conversation? How did you feel at the time when we first met? Uh, I was uh, changing from uh, uh, um, IT uh, service delivery to IT uh, sourcing activities, but I felt that my career was a bit uh, stagnating. And uh, I started to feel uh, frustrated, a bit doubting about what is the next step, what is the next move. Uh, I am done with my career or not. When you reach close to 50, you're like, OK, what shall I do? <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, I, I was in a moment of, uh, of doubt and, and really uh, not really clear of what would be the next step for me. So, uh, uh, yeah, it was uh, not, uh, not uh, an easy time. How did that feeling impact in your day to day? I would say the mood uh, mainly and the mindset. When you are in such a questioning time in your life, uh, you are uh, maybe less engaging with people. Uh, you tend to complain. You tend to not seeing the opportunities in front of you uh, and, and just dig into uh, what you are doing right now. So short seeing, I would say. Hmm? What was the challenge at that time you were facing while you were thinking in this you know, when you want to have a change, but you feel the stagnation, what was specifically the challenge you were facing? The most challenge was uh, how to uh, get attention from the people that are able to make a difference for me. Um, in those large organizations like uh, the Volvo Group or SKF or any uh, major uh, uh, big company, uh, you have this trusted network of uh, top management or leadership uh, uh, people. And uh, I was kind of new in SKF at that time, still like less than two years uh, in, in the organization. And I was doubting my capacity to, to get the trust of those people, to be able to uh, 
enter the club. And what result do you feel most proud of now that we have worked together for a few months? I will say, first of all, now I have the job I wanted to have. I'm the, the first one to be proud of. Now that uh, a part of that, it, it was really a journey. And uh, uh, what I'm proud of is the transformation in the mindset, uh, how I see through things how I'm able to focus on, on what matter, how also I have, I would say, uh, um, stopped to uh, limit myself. The, this little voice in your head that says, you, oh, you should not do this, you can't do that, this is impossible. Those kind of things uh, uh, were really limiting myself. And, and we worked a lot on that. And, and I would just say thank you, Tiffany, for helping me in, in that journey. How did you do it? How did you change? I mean, these are, these are things when we say it, it's like, oh yeah, it's simple, right? It's just, I, I, it, it, we should not limit ourselves. But how did you do it? It's a journey. Uh, it's a journey. And uh, first of all, you need to surrender in, your, <laughs> in a way uh, to say what I believe so far, the way I work, the way you function, you need to, to, to challenge yourself and take a new start. So in a way, you need to take a blank sheet and define what the future looks like, and 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 really uh, with uh, with the help that you gave me and the and the pointers to to rethink uh, the, the the future and to put yourself in the in this future place and and to really believe in 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 what uh, what is uh, possible uh, and, uh, and 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 prioritize as well uh, the things work uh, in a different way prepare in a different way speak with intent uh, when uh, we meet stakeholders and overall be prepared. So it's a lot of preparations. It's a lot of change. Mm. Yeah. Can you talk about your three takeaways from the 1% Academy and our coaching together? Three takeaways. Yeah, I said the, the, the change of mindset. That was the biggest one. I would say to stop uh, stop blocking yourself on something and, and, and really be uh, looking forward. Uh, and also uh, being able to approach people in in a different way. And that would be my second takeaway regarding the network, how it has helped me to reach out uh, in a different way, how to impact the conversation with uh, with my stakeholders and how to spend the right time with the right people uh, that will serve my uh, uh, objectives. And that's, I would say, the second one. And uh, the, the third one, my big takeaway is that I got the job I wanted. Yeah. I mean, share with us more about the job you want. What is it that in this job make you feel so excited about it? Um, it's about being in charge. Uh, so it was a couple of years now that I, I, I wanted to uh, to go into a world where uh, I can uh, take uh, the the business decision, the strategical decision, where uh, also I can have, I can have an impact. Most of the role is how much you can impact, how much you can influence. Uh, and and uh, for me, it was important to to reach a kind of position where uh, I am able to impact the business. I'm able to impact the area, the domain I'm responsible for, uh, mm -hmm. in in uh, in uh, in the scale I I want but also as a leader to guide and also influence uh, people in the organization. Uh, so it's a, it's a combination. And the third point about that particular role, it's, uh, it's in this fantastic uh, uh, brand, Polestar, uh, leading the innovation in electric vehicle, um, uh, targeting uh, uh, sustainability uh, uh, and zero emission uh, for all the supply chain of the, of the car, from the design to the manufacturing. And after that, when the, the, as, a, as a user, we drive the car, uh, make uh, a le the less impact environment. And it's, um, it's a fantastic uh, project. Uh, which uh, resonate with my own uh, purpose. Yeah, fantastic. It's super exciting just listening to you talking about this, the bigger responsibility, more strategic thinking, more futuristic uh, vision of the organization. Now, I want to go back to a little bit uh, where you talk about how you approach people, how you influence, how you prepare. What did you learn about that? One thing uh, uh, I have changed uh, uh, through the the, the 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 coaching and through the, the this uh, journey in the in the in the academy uh, is to uh, uh, have this uh, morning routine, and the morning routine is about. Uh, Thinking about the day, uh, thinking with whom you are going to speak, uh, taking the time to uh, visualize the, the different steps in the day to have the right focus. And when you do that, you say, okay, I'm going to meet this person. And 
if I want to meet this person, how I want this person to feel and how I want to influence uh, the how what is the takeaway for that meeting with the person and to really think about the results. What will be the outcome when I will speak to that person instead of thinking about the pure content and I want to just tick my box of what I want to say to that person? Changing this mindset and changing this way of uh, approaching a conversation to look at what I want the result to be and what I want this person to feel after the uh, after this meeting, and it's a completely game changer. Um, I would say. Yeah, and this morning routine, how long have you been implementing it? Quite fast after we started. I think I started uh, somewhere in July, if I'm right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we yes. we started in April or May, yeah. May maybe the yeah. So two months after we started the the the, the academy. Mm. Yeah, I I really feel that I I feel it as well because after I, we talk about the morning routine, it is one of in one of the modules, and you said I'm I'm gonna start to implement it, and I really see the difference of you become more clarified of your day and more guided with your future version of yourself and more prepared. The way you present yourself, even in our coaching calls, that will be very different. Do you feel that? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's uh, also a great uh, way to um, be more efficient during the day. You are not any more uh, swallowed by the days. So yeah. you just jump one after meeting and uh, you are always, always in a rush. Uh, in your head, in your conversations, uh, and and you stop for the calendar is driving you, and and this is uh, not good. Uh, the running routine helped me to plan not only the day but the, the week because you don't think only of what the next hours, but uh, it's overall a time to reflect what I want to do, what is important, to whom I will speak, how I will uh, uh, prioritize my activities during the day, and it really helped me to be more efficient overall. Uh, I've been able to uh, spare a lot of time uh, uh, doing anyway my job with high quality, uh, but at the same time having more time to uh, work on my development, work on my network and and, uh, and influence my stakeholders. Yeah, and I say that these morning routines are not just about waking up early and planning your day, but more planning your day with the future version of yourself, where you will think from that person, that version of you, that identity. It is entirely different when you look on the present, but from the future version. Absolutely correct. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's to uh, change, uh, to bring already your head in in, in something different, uh, so that uh, you can exactly as you said, you can think and you can uh, prepare the, uh, the 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 message uh, in 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 the future version or already in in the next step of your career. So you appear even stronger in front of your uh, uh, stakeholders. You mentioned that a few times that you were kind of blocking yourself before. What was that like? It was um, typically, uh, I was telling, uh, there is no such, there is not so much uh, opportunities out there uh, for the type of role I'm looking for. Um, it, it comes once a while, maybe a few per year, and, and uh, it will is very difficult to, 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 to have those kind of uh, opportunities. And whenever they, they will appear, I'm sure they are already pre-booked and, and, uh, or, or pre-decided. Nothing for me. That's one example. Another one was ah, this person, uh, he will never talk to me. He will, uh, he will not trust me. So I will not, uh, I will not, he will not think that I mean, it's important to, to spend time with me. So I was really stopping myself to, to, to talk to some people, to engage with some people. And I was trying to keep my comfort zone. So I would say, yeah, another way to say this mindset change is uh, dare to go out of your comfort zone, but not in, in a whatever way, out of your comfort zone in a structured way. What's your mindset change now? I am much more confident. Um, I'm much calmer as well. In, uh, I'm Outside, I'm always calm because I'm someone that is really uh, uh, calm, I would say, as a, as a character. But inside, sometimes you boil or, or you are stressed or, or you is going high, high and low. Uh, I will say a big change is uh, this uh, level of uh, trust and confidence I have and uh, the, uh, the capacity to uh, see through and to really uh, uh, plan ahead, uh, to act with intent, to uh, control uh, the, mm -hmm. the activities, the day, the conversations in a much better way. And also in my family, in my private life, it, it has been uh, also much better to have this mindset uh, change uh, that everything is possible, the tomorrow will be even better than yesterday, and there is a bright future for everyone. So, uh, And it's about what you want to do. Yeah.
Yeah. What was your turning point of this change from feeling, you know, it's not possible, the, these good positions are taken, the people who are in decision powers, they don't want to, you know, talk with me to this mindset of seeing unlimited possibilities, of seeing all these opportunities. I remember you said about the car, you want to share once you see the car. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good one. Um, about the car, the, the, when you have reach that step and you have made this, this change in your head uh, it's um, it's like uh, when you want to an example similar example is when you want to buy a car you think about okay i'm going to buy i don't know a bmw blah 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 and when you have a really you want that very strongly you have spent time on different visits in different garage or, or magazines or whatever and, and and you are focused on on that particular car that you really like mm -hmm. and suddenly you see that car everywhere uh, every ah oh, this one ah oh, this one ah oh, this one and maybe six months ago you never noticed that car but because it was just one of them but it was not the one you were really focusing on and mm -hmm. and that's uh, so typical uh, and for the opportunities uh, it for the the job opportunities it's a uh, it's a bit the same when you really know what you want when you have defined your objective when you know what type of role in what type of organization and at the right level of seniority, uh, you tune your search yes. LinkedIn uh, or another any, uh, engine of, uh, of job uh, board uh, and suddenly everything uh, comes. And uh, yeah. I was not floated, but it was like at least once a month, it was an opportunity coming up my way that I could uh, apply for. And mm. the two, three years before, uh, I felt like nothing was happening. So it's really about uh, what you see and how you how you um, configure your brain to uh, your reprogram your brain to look at it. So if you are to say something to yourself a few months ago before you joined the program, when you were mm -hmm. having the feeling of stagnation and feeling blocked, what would you want to say to yourself? Get the head out of the water, look the horizon and not uh, look at your shoes. <laughs> yeah. What would you want to tell somebody who is considering joining the program but still hesitating? I would say you need to take some courage to uh, get away of your old habits, uh, of your old routines, of your own belief. When you are, I remember like it was just a few months ago and, and you are like 40 plus years old and you have 20 years of experience and you believe strongly yourself. I've been doing so good. I have been progressing my career. Uh, I know what I do. I know how to work and I know how to focus. I know how to prepare my meetings. And, uh, and, and you are full of confidence in a way, but though a lot of things are still limiting you. So to join that program is to challenge a bit also yourself to say, okay, what you have done is good, but maybe it's not good enough. And it's uh, to take the next step, you have to do things differently. So uh, I would say that's the first point, to uh, get away and, and, and uh, be able to, uh, to take the next step in a different way with a different approach. The second thing I will say is also the, the benefits of uh, the, the group coaching. This is something I've not spoken yet in the interview, but uh, it's, it's a very good uh, takeaway that uh, in that program, you are not just in your loan, but with others. Uh, that are uh, in the same situation and uh, it's a fantastic sharing, uh, fantastic opportunity and, and along the different calls you learn from each other. So uh, you you are part of, uh, uh, everyone is part of a journey at different stages. So you can see also uh, with different uh, uh, people how the evolution uh, is like and and uh, and, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a co-learning activity as well. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like, you know, in the beginning it was more of I help you. And then later on, as you developed and you evolved, I see that before I even need to uh, answer uh, some of the group and you you can even help them with your experience, sharing mm. what's, what, what it's like for you. It is also that you're, you're not just taking from the program, actually, you also give back a lot once you have achieved a certain milestone while others are still at where you were a few months ago. That was mm. extremely inspiring for others to see, hey, you know, it's possible for you, it's possible for me as well. Uh, it's not just people see, oh, you know, as a, your coach, I've, I've achieved it, but also it's possible in all of you, it's possible for all of you. There is abundance of opportunities there for the job you would like to have. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely correct. One more thing I'd like to add in terms of uh, uh, takeaway or, or things I would tell to someone who will join the program is uh, about, it's not just about having a shiny CV or a nice LinkedIn profile and, and, and have a nice letter uh, to, 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 uh, to apply for a job. This is just uh, the upper 
side of the iceberg. In, in that program, you will learn to really have the storytelling that goes together, uh, to show yourself on the best way, to, to uh, also uh, give the me right message to the person that you're going to meet uh, in, in how they will benefit to, to, to work with you. Uh, so it's all about how to uh, use the, your experience, your information, and to, to turn it in a, in a very uh, strong message uh, toward the stakeholders. So it's, uh, it's also part of the big learnings. Exactly, exactly. Most people join the program thinking they're going to have a great CV, and then they will get a job. It's far away from that. CV is, is a one important piece, but it's really just one piece of the puzzle. Mm. Yeah. Gil, is there anything else you'd like to add? Maybe one um, one anecdote. You uh, you asked me the turning point uh, on on when I felt that something has changed, and uh, so I would like to share one uh, one conversation I had with uh, one of my stakeholders. Um, it was after one attempt to uh, join a team, a management team, with a certain role, and uh, for some reason uh, I was not the chosen one for for that particular role. And uh, the next time I met that person, uh, that senior leader, I said. It's okay. Uh, I, I will not. Uh, I will not uh, have that job, and, and it, it's fine. Uh, no problem with him. But still, I want to collaborate with you. I want to help you to reach your objectives. And that that person just changed the way he was looking at me suddenly, and he was. Uh, I felt a relief. He was like, "Oh, oh Guillaume, this is so good what you're telling me." And and the the after that moment, the interaction between me and that senior leader became completely different. And uh, from uh, a colleague, I became a peer and, and supporting him in, in his own organization, in his own development. And uh, uh, it has been great. Mm. So uh, that's also, I would have never said that. I would never approach that conversation in the same way before. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think that he's just one of the many stakeholders where you think it's difficult to break through into the inner circle. In the end, if, even you are now leaving SKF, I mean, but you have left a great group of sponsors and the inner circles in SKF. Yeah, absolutely. When I when I gave away the message or when I gave the message to uh, to the different people that I, I was going to leave, I took the time to uh, have one to one with uh, with the key uh, stakeholders and to give the message uh, in in a personal way um, and also um, remembering the good outcome we had together or, or sharing the the, the, the the good time uh, and the, the the specific outcome that uh, achievements that we have had together and and uh, i felt a lot of reward uh, from those conversations uh, so good feedback uh, and some people even got emotional during those meetings so it was really really grateful Yes, yes. I'm so happy for you and Guillaume. Thank you so much also for sharing your story with all of us. And um, I can't wait to see what you will achieve next and what your journey will be at Postar even beyond. You will stay in the program and you will come back to our cause, uh, continue to grow together. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tiffany. Now, for all of you who are listening, if you're serious about advancing your career from middle management to the next level, you can apply for the 1% Academy program where I'll be coaching you and you will meet Guillaume as well as your peers in the program. Uh, all you need to do is to book a free strategy call with me or my team through the link below. And I will speak with you on the call. Thank you for watching.